Assalamu alaikum. Please turn off all cell phones until after Juma, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Allah Akbar Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha Shadwan Muhammadan Rasulullah Shadwan Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Nista'inuhu wa nista'gafiruhu wa nuhinubihi azwajil Nashadu an la ilaha illallah waqtuhu la sharika la wa nashadu anni muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in amma ba'd We offer this uh, translation to you all praise be to Allah, Rabb, God and Evolver, Cherisher and Sustainer of all the systems of knowledge. We seek Him for assistance and we ask for His forgiveness and we put our trust in Him, He that is Almighty and Sublime. We witness that there is no, uh, no God except Allah, one alone, with no partners with Him. And we witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Prayers and peace be upon him and upon his family and companions. All of them and what else follows of that are excellent salutation. 
Uh, today is uh, significant, not only because it's the second day of August, but also it's the first day of Dhul Hijjah, which is the last month of our Islamic lunar calendar. So when we say math, when we say um, January, February, March, etc., all the way to December, Gregorian calendar, uh, they are following uh, the Earth as it uh, uh, rotates and revolves around the sun. But for Muslims, we follow the lunar calendar uh, as the moon uh, rotates and revolves around the earth. So this is the last month for this year, uh, 1440 uh, El Hijra. El Hijra means that that is when our prophet, prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he made the journey from Mecca to Medina. Some historians might say he was run out of Mecca. Yes, they did try uh, to uh, kill him. But there in um, uh, Medina, many of the rituals that we now practice, uh, that is uh, the Salat, uh, the Jummah, uh, as well as the Zakat, uh, Ramadan, etc. Many of them were established in a community that uh, was supportive of what uh, Prophet Muhammad prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, was uh, preaching and guiding people. Now we expect Saturday, August the 31st uh, of 2019, CE, Christian era, comma era, A AD, etc., uh, to be Muharram the 1st, 1441, saying some 1,441 years ago, our prophet made the hijrah. Also, in the, the Juma announcements, this comes out uh, every week, every Friday when you come, we have announcements. The last, uh, the last uh, item says, join us on Islamic Way. This is ceremoniously named Islamic Way in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., as we celebrate and commemorate the sacrifice of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, the Eid al-Adha. All right, on August 11, 2019, prayer, food, and fun throughout the day. So we plan on blocking off of the street uh, and having different uh, festivities. We'll probably mention that again, uh, inshallah. Now, the first 10 days, uh, which precede Eid al-Adha, have great significance as they are meant to motivate and encourage Muslims for Eid al-Adha. Muslims try to perform maximum worship and obedience, which includes all our life. All our activities should be some form of worship, whether you put them in the religious frame or not, which include all our activities of life to please Allah during this period. We're talking about the first 10 days, and this is the first day of uh, the, this month. All right. And it's also seen as a special time of devotion and good deeds. We refer to our prophet when he was asked, what is al-Islam? He responded, Buni al-Islamu al al kamsin shahadati an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah wa qomis solati wa ta'iz zakati wal hajj and wa sawmi ramadan. Interesting that uh, Ramadan doesn't mean to fast. It's the ninth month of the lunar calendar, but Salmi is the word for fasting, and we fast especially during the month of Ramadan. Translation, Al-Islam, whenever it's referred to in the Quran, it's always Al-Islam. A lot of times we say Islam. Al-Islam is built, boony, is built on fire. We could say five senses. We could say, uh, say our five fingers, etc. Five is significant. Whenever we see any number in any religious scripture, whether it's the Quran or the Bible or it's the Torah, we know that it has much more significance than just the number itself. So it says, Al-Islam is built on five, declaring that there is no God but the God. When we are uh, out uh, proselytizing, uh, sharing people, they say sometimes they uh, get, a little, get a little upset. You say Allah, we say God. You say Allah, we say Jehovah. But let them know that that is two words, Allah. It's the definite article plus Allah, which suggests something that you love, adore, or worship. So I could say there's no Allah but Allah. No Allah but Allah. And that Prophet Muhammad, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah, the God. So this is what the translation is saying. And it says the establishment of solat, the payment of zakat, the hajj, and fasting in the month of Ramadan. Now in Al-Islam, there are two great festivals of profound significance for all Muslims. I don't know about your situation, but I've worked uh, uh, with the broader community and, uh, you know, sometimes they say, uh, well, why don't y'all make up your mind what day it's going to be? We got December the 25th, we always know. I said, but you are following the Gregorian calendar. We are not. So it is uh, two uh, great festivals of profound significance for all Muslims. Both go under the name of Eid. And that first letter is not an Aleph, it's an Ayn, Eid which means a reoccurring, the word itself, means a reoccurring happiness and both are connected with the performance of duty in the service of Allah. So we expect it every year, every year. These festivals commemorate remarkable achievement in the life of the individual and rituals associated with them symbolize the aspirations of the universal man. Not the American man, not the Asian man, not the African man, not the Egyptian man, not the Indonesian man, the Moroccan man, the Pakistani man, the Syrian man, the, even the Saudi Arabian man, or the Somalian man. No, the universal man. In fact, on Hajj, all males have to leave your cultural dress. So I can't wear this when I'm performing the rites of Hajj. All men have to leave off your cultural dress, and all men, regardless of your station, you know, what, what you may be, your significance in your home country or there in Saudi Arabia, all men must dress in two white sheets, which we call the Ikram. All men. The first festival is known as the festival of returning to the natural life. This is Eid al-Fit, and that, uh, that uh, is uh, talking about uh, the natural light, fit. Uh, after the fire and the tar and the rat. Natural life. It is celebrated to commemorate the completion of the month of Ramadan. So the first day, right after uh, we have finished Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, the first day of the next month, then we have uh, the Eid al-Fit. And it represents a personal victory of the spiritual man over his blind, unrestrained appetites and desires. So what are we saying, basically? Your appetite and your desires can't be the guide in your life. Although we all have natural appetites, natural desires, all right, and sensual urges. But we are guided, we've been reading the Quran, guided by knowledge and common sense. So we could say, if you will accept, Ramadan is an annual training program. Annual means it's once a year, and training means we follow a certain uh, style. We're not eating during the daylight of eating or drinking during the daylight hours. We have the Torah, we have prayers, etc. during uh, the daylight hours. So and that means something too, but we won't go into detail at this time. It is an annual training program, Ramadan. To do what? To refresh us for doing our duties for Allah, our creator and sustainer. That is, Rabbil Alameen. The second festival, you know, again, in the broader community, they say to do, we, we got Christmas, we got Easter, what y'all got? We got Eid al fit we have Eid al-Adha. All right, the second is the festival of sacrifice, Eid al-Adha, and it represents something greater than the personal victory. So now follow this trend, we have Ramadan, all right, and uh, it is fasting for the pleasure of Allah, and it's not polite to come up and say, brother, how's your fast coming? No, I'm not fasting for you, I'm fasting for Allah. So it is the personal victory, the victory of the social human uh, when we go into Eid al-Adha, which is symbolized in the pilgrimage, and another word is Hajj. And again, many other religious communities, they have their pilgrimage, and we have our pilgrimage as well. The pilgrimage Hajj to the Kaaba. It's not Mecca so much, but the Kaaba is there in Mecca. The Eid al-Adha is the brighter Eid. The brighter Eid is the word of God, the Qur'an, serving as enlightenment for the nature after having devoted ourselves to the reading of the Qur'an more intensely in Ramadan. The festival of sacrifice, Eid al-Adha, which comes three months after Ramadan, on the 10th day, 
of the 12th month of the Muslim calendar. And we already mentioned, we read that we expect it to be for us uh, Sunday, August the 11th, where we close off the streets and have our celebration. And we hope our neighbors will also come and share with us. And you also, we, we, this is a, a good time for you also to invite some of your friends, your relatives, etc., that do not say that they are Muslim, but invite them and share with us. Children as well, children as well are most welcome. Again, the festival sacrifice, which comes three months after Ramadan, on the 10th day of the 12th month of the Muslim calendar year, the religious. So it is the 12th month. All right, last month, 1440, when uh, Saturday I mentioned, is Saturday 31st, we'll start the next uh, year, 1441, which means 1,441 years ago, our prophet, prayers and peace of Allah, made the journey. Now this also says something else, we want to get into too much, but it, it shows you now in the Christian religion, take note that they highlight a personality, that is Jesus the Christ. For us, we are highlighting what he, what the Hijra means, he has left where he was not welcome there in Mecca, his home, and went there uh, to Medina. So we are highlighting significance of the uh, act, what he did. Not so much the personality, but the act that he did. And there in Medina is where many of the rituals that we now uh, follow were established there in uh, Medina after he made the Hijra. So again, uh, this uh, 12th month of the Muslim calendar represents the second great hope for man and society. It follows the completion of the pilgrimage to Mecca, Hajj, during the course of which Muslims renounce worldly concerns in seeking the pleasure of Allah. Why, why, why? He is the creator. He is the creator. He is responsible. It is creator for us as Muslims. We have two concepts. We have creator and creation. He is the creator and he is not influenced by the creation, but he is responsible for every leaf that falls off of a tree in creation. So we have here the creator and the creation. This is indeed the most significant day in the life of a Muslim because it represents the way man makes a personal sacrifice for the benefit of society by giving the best of himself in the service of Allah. We're Abdullah, servants of Allah. So even though we are working for Pepco, even though we're working for the water company, even though we are driving a cab, even though we are instructor, ultimately we are working for the service of God. We're ultimately Abdullah. When we give of ourselves in this manner, we are following the way of Allah's upright service, that is, the prophets. I repeat, when we give of ourselves, we're giving ourselves uh, no, no selfishness about it. We're giving of ourselves to serve. We're serving, we're serving in a capacity in a society, but ultimately we're seen as serving God. So when we give ourselves in this matter, we are following the way of Allah's upright servants, that is the prophet. Once we have made our individual lives, now let's follow the logic now, we're finishing Ramadan. Once we have made our individual lives conform to what Allah asks of us, we want to see conformity with his will throughout the society. We have conformed, now we would like the society that we are engaged in, interacting in, and living in to also conform to God's will. We have been given understanding which tells us we cannot live at peace by ourselves. We can't enjoy the blessings of a spiritual life by ourselves. Every time we walk out of the doors, we encounter obstacles which threaten our life. Now, I don't have these in my note, but this happened while I was uh, sitting in the back, and some are not comfortable with this. We ask everyone that comes up and says, please leave your bags downstairs. Right. We could say for security reasons. Did you know one of the, one of the uh, uh, meanings for the word that we use for faith, iman, is also security. Yes, we didn't create this environment that we live in beyond these four walls, they say. In this. So we have to realize and understand what we have. So it's not uh, any way uh, making diff things difficult for you, but it's the kind of society, and I don't have to tell you uh, the different things that are happening in the broader community. And we're very saddened, uh, almost to crying to tears, things that have happened, uh, different massages. Now he's asking us to please uh, move forward. Right. If you've been on hard, you know what that's about. If you've been on hard, and I have many times, you, you know what that's about. Just, just, just tight. Now, I'm sorry to tell you this to some of the brothers, you know. Tell you this. It might be a sister on your right. It might be a sister on your left. It might be a sister in front of you. It might be a sister behind you. That doesn't matter when we're on hard. 
But that doesn't matter. But it does say God is telling us something's going on if just the men. Now the sister can wear, what you see the sisters have on today, they can wear on hard. A lot of times they don't do that because of the climate. But us, the men, we have to have two white sheets. They have a, taught them, a, a teacher taught in school before, and you know, they say, you know, they always come up with something. Well, well, well uh, Brother Salim, uh, Papa Salim, uh, what do you do if, if, if the bottom, if the, if the, if the bottom uh, uh, road falls down? I said, you just pick it up and keep on moving. <laughs> you just pick it up and keep on moving. And that's very serious. Those things do happen. Most of the time we have one wrapped around and the other one we tie so it's tight. All right, again, once we have made, again, our individual lives during Ramadan conform to what Allah asks of us, we want to see conformity with Ismail will throughout our society. All right. We can't enjoy the best of a spiritual life by ourselves. Every time we walk out of the doors, when you walk outside of these doors, we encounter obstacles which threaten our life. This makes us want to do something to change the world into a good place, a better place to which to live the life that Allah intends for us. Now that's another quote by all together. And that's what we're, we're about. We're about trying to establish the life as the creator of life intended, as the creator of human life intended. And we have a lot of things uh, going on, uh, we know, out in the society, and especially if you have children. I respect you and honor you and salute you. We have, you have a serious agenda on your hand. We see the different things that are coming and the different ways of communication, et cetera, et cetera. So we hope you will take that, uh, that and, we, and we know uh, the prophet has said at the uh, feet of the mother is heaven. So we know that the, the mother has a serious responsibility uh, in raising uh, the children. And at this time, I just uh, uh, say a, a prayer for thanking Allah for my mother and the job that she did. Let us continue. The festival sacrifice also commemorates the act, the great act of devotion performed by Prophet Abraham or Ibrahim in showing his willingness to sacrifice his son, Ishmael. By so doing, he proved his devotion to Allah being complete. So now that, you gotta pause on that. Now that's, that's a serious situation. He was asked to sacrifice his son, Ishmael, and he, 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 he was ready to sacrifice him. But by so doing, he proved his devotion to be complete. Instead, Allah revealed the lamb to be given in a feast for the poor. Therefore, again, what is it saying to us? It's saying to us that we should give in zakat. We should give in sadaqah. We should give to help the needy. We should give to work to end hunger in our neighborhoods, in America, in the world. We should engage in community service. Two references I have here. One is from the Quran. We know the Quran. What is, what is its purpose? We know we have al fatiha but then in the uh, second uh, chapter, the second surah, it says, this is the book, and it is guiding sure. For who? For those who believe. It has some other ayats, right. So the, the purpose of the Quran is a book of guides. You want to know how you should live this life? The, 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 the author, the creator, has given us the Quran. We have the Bible too. The Bible means many books. They have uh, 27 in the Old Testament, uh, 39 in the New. We have the Torah. The Torah means the law, mainly uh, following uh, Moses. But we have the Quran, which is the last. We, we had the Torah, then we had the Bible, then we had the Quran, the last. And there's no coincidence that the last book in the New Testament uh, is Revelation. And we should consider the Quran a revelation. So again, the reference one we have, this is a, a Surah 2, Ayah 124, and it says, And remember, translation, and remember that Abraham was tried by his Lord with certain commands, which he fulfilled. He said, I will make thee an imam, the word actually imam, to the nations. Then we have in Genesis, uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 17, uh, verses 1 to 6, in the Bible, there are verses, but for us, we call them uh, ayats, which means a sign, S-I-G-N. All right, and it says, and when Abram was 90 years old, we used to think that was old, but I, I tell you, we, we, we're getting up there now, right? 90 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face. Now, is that, is that, is that a, a sedative? He fell on his face. 
Not only did, not only did he fell on his face. And God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant was with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. We recall actually in Salat, we say, Allah, make Muhammad successful and the Muhammad's followers of Muhammad successful that they make Ibrahim and the fathers of Ibrahim. Surely I praise it, Magdalene. We actually say that every time we have Salat in a position. So you see the connection, Abraham and Muhammad. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee. Last, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed uh, after uh, thee. Yes. So finally, Eid al-Adha is celebrating the victory of the intellect. Yes. No, we want to, uh, this line I forgot. Many of us, so I read this from the Bible, many of us indigenous Americans have different relationships to Christians. Some of us are former Christians. And some of us, we have Christian relatives. But still, despite former Christians, despite Christian relatives, many of us have been raised with outstanding morals, outstanding behavior, and outstanding respect. But I understand uh, people from different countries, they have a different a view toward Christianity. So we're just letting you know that many of us, you might marvel at how the kind of person we are, the character we have. We want to let you know that many of that have come from our Christian background, our Christian mothers, our Christian fathers, grandfathers, grandparents, etc., etc. Yes. Finally, Eid al-Adha is celebrating the victory of the intellect that is associated with Prophet Ibrahim. He led the world into the fulfillment of the needs or the appetites of the intellect, the human brain. He engaged the universe with his intelligence, which is a definition for education. He engaged, he involved his mind, his brain with the, with the universe, the sun, the moon, and the different things we see in, in creation, which we are a definition for education. Do we recall his destruction of his father's idols? As a young man, yes. And then they said, well, who would do this? And he said, ask the big one. As he said, you know, you know he can't talk. But why are you following him? Why are you this guy? And his search for authority, and he finally arrived at monotheism and the concept of a universe. That's a religious word, universe, one verse. Let us remember, we are not the only, okay, thank you. We are not the only children of Abraham, right? The Jews are the children of Abraham. They say so. The Christians are the children of Abraham. So we are living in the day of religion. The conclusion. In our fact, it says Maliki Yomidin. Most of what we say master of the day of religion. We could also say Dean, master of the day of the day of religion. When the main religions, we're saying religions now as a guide for life. Religious guy must come together for understanding, respect, harmony, and cooperation. And we see that a lot of times. We don't see interreligious much now. We see a lot of times inner faith, inner faith. So the 8th to the 13th of Dhul Hijjah, this is the, the, the last month of the lunar calendar, Hajj, the world calls these days globalization. That's how they define the way the world is now. And some of us, we get horrified because we, we read immediately about things that are happening all over the world. In a moment's notice, uh, the way we have the computers. Where the descendants of Adam, that's all of us, all humans, where the descendants of Adam, we're all connected. And we're all dependents. And the world is one community. This is what we get out of uh, what we are following. There were the descendants of Adam. And it's no, no coincidence, Adam, if you listen to something, it's almost sound like Adam, right? Adam, Adam, right? A-T-O-M, which they call the, the, the basic cell in, in the masses. The sentence of Adam realized we're all connected and we're all dependents and the world is one community. As we conclude, this connectiveness is implied in calling the first house of worship Beitullah. Beitullah, house of Allah, is called the Kaaba. The Kaaba. And the word Kaaba, when we look it up, comes from the word that refers to the bones, how they're being connected 
as the ankle bone connects with the rest. So basically, we are uh, actually, uh, as a skeleton, you can't just stand alone. It has to be connected and it has to have balance. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walila Lilham. Now that's what we will be doing on uh, uh, Sunday, uh, August 11th. Uh, we that are here in America, different places in America, we'll be saying, and it goes on and on. But if we were going harsh, we'll be saying, La Baik Allahumma La Baik, La Baik Allah Sharika Laka La Baik, Inna Hamna Waniya Mata Laka Wal Muk La Sharika La. Now, uh, to learn that, I really didn't look at any words uh, when you're on the plane. We go over there, we go on the plane, as we get to a certain part uh, near uh, uh, Mecca. Uh, then we have some, so the men, we begin to put on our uh, uh, ikram, and we begin to say the Talibiyah. And here's a translation. Here I am, O Lord. Here I am. Here I am. You have no partner. Here I am. Surely praise, blessings, and the kingdom are for you. You have no partners. And they just uh, drink, sing that, and we're just uh, uh, thankful. Now, sometimes, I guess you know, uh, some of you know me, I'll be outside. You know, this is a mass jig. You know, now, some of you, I'm looking out in the audience, I see some of you youngsters, why don't y'all go do some, uh, uh, what do they call it, some research. How do they come up with the word mosque? Okay, they're saying the influence of another language and how we traveled here. All right, but we'd like for you to do some in uh, work on that and, and write a book on that. When you look in the Quran and you see how it's with meme and you, you see the scene and you see the gene and the dial, it says masjid. Not moss. So now we find that a lot a lot of us are moving on. I didn't know this that a lot of us are moving on mass. Now why is it called Mashti? One time, uh, I don't want to get into it. This person came and I was here uh, downstairs. And, so, and I said, well, I haven't seen you in so long. What brings you here? They said, to make solat. <laughs> right, what's wrong with you? <laughs> make, make solat. Yeah, so Mashti. Now, you can take this as far as you want to go, but it's called a Mashti. That means that the, uh, the first two letters there uh, indicate a place where you make, like it also be called a masala up here, masjid, a place where you make sajida. Well, why do they not say a place where you make kiyam, a place where you make ruku, a place where you make jalsa? It says a place where you make sajida. So that tells us that one of the important, most important positions in our solat is sajida. And what we are saying to ourselves, to our body, to our mind, what we are saying to ourselves when we put our forehead, this identifies us. Sometimes I, the children don't like me to do this. I tell them sometimes, I say, now can I still teach? I had a terrible accident. I am now in a wheelchair. But I, when I come back to school, I'm in the wheelchair, but I still have this. Can I still come and teach you? Oh, you most certainly can. I know some of you do. I, I need to get out that wheelchair if I'm going to be handling you. Yes, so this, is, this, this identifies us as a human being, the conscious. And then things move on now to the subconscious, etc. Religious expression requires a social context. Now, I didn't come up with that. That came from a book we, we read by who we see, many of us, as Mujaddid Imam W. D. Muhammad, in the book, Al-Islam. Religious expression requires a social context. So now, what am I saying? All the rituals, not putting down, all the rituals that we have, they must be understood, practiced, and applied in our everyday life. Otherwise, what is the point of the ritual? I know so some, some we, 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 we're very concerned, and I agree. We're not making any less, uh, less of it. We're very concerned that we are here, uh, make sure we are on, on time, the solat, make sure we're doing this on time and that. Fine. Our religion is a way of life, not Friday, Saturday, and Sunday worship only. Allah has designed all humans to be scientists, and we invite you to spell scientist, S-I-G-N. Scientists. Do we recall the hadith where the man was cited for his perfection in completing all the rituals? But the Prophet said, well, who takes care of him? 
He said, you that take care of him, you are better than him. Now I know that. We, we, you had to swallow that. We're the ones taking care of him, but he performs all the rituals perfectly. This is what our prophet, prayers and peace of Allah be upon him. So the best of you is the one who's most useful in society. The ritual, be, the ritual should result in a decent person, a decent daughter, a decent son, a decent neighbor, a decent mother, a decent father, a decent relative, a decent, a decent employee or employer, a decent car, owner, etc. Even all the rituals and hajj are meaningless if you miss Mount Arafat. Now that's pretty rough. <laughs> yes, and I recur one. I, rec I, I, I recall on one uh, hajj. Uh, it was uh, one of our brothers, and uh, he was he was ill. The whole hajj, when it came time for Mount Arafat, he got it together and made sure he made Mount Arafat. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you meet, miss the meeting, the jamat on Mount Arafat, you had missed your heart. Here we want to put a footnote where we call the prophet's last khutbah was there on Hajj. And he was there on the camel, and he made it, and it's very significant. i tell you like this. This is how it says. After the performance of his last Hajj, he delivered his farewell speech at Arafat before about 120,000 of his followers. The speech was one of the most memorable and important for its contents in the history of Prophet Muhammad's life. The Prophet, delivered, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, delivered the speech sitting on his camel and his devoted followers listened intently to every word of it. Now we like to go, we're not gonna go through the speech, but then at the bottom, when he fi finished, then he said to them, have I conveyed the message of Allah to you all people? And they sounded, Nam, yes, you have. Allah is the witness, yes. So we have a number of rituals for Hajj. I've already mentioned one is put on the Ikram. Everybody you see here, we're men, if we were at Hajj, we'd have to put on our, our two pieces and the sisters that could still wear what they have on right now. But some way it may change because of the climate. The universal brotherhood of humanity is exhibiting, leading, dominating these artificial barriers of racism, nationalism, prejudices, status, class distinction, uh, positions, and arrogance spiritual, moral, intellectual superiority of the male, chauvinism they call it, male over the female, is checked by only men's akram is the baby rap. The baby rap. I can't say for you, I got his grandson that on. They always using white uh, towels uh, for him. The baby rap of two white sheets only. When the baby, now, when the baby comes here, from, now I'm gonna use colors here, from a black woman, a white woman, a red woman, a yellow woman, the babies are all the same. If we had uh, the control of the mic, say, okay, brother, uh, John, y'all, y'all, uh, put the baby sound on that. Ah! Now, I want you to tell me, is it a black baby? Is it a white baby? Is it a red baby? Or is it a yellow baby? You can't. The baby makes the same sound and wants the same thing. Communications play the sound of the baby. The baby has to learn these different things, languages, nationalities, cultures, ethnic foods, dress, we men go to Masjid Haram without the dress of the society to go back to our original nature. That's why I said baby rap. So if our heart, our spirit, our mind, and our soul is in it, you come back a new creation. It is almost, I put these words here, it is almost impossible to come back from Hajj the same. It is almost impossible. So those of you that have been on Hajj, talk to, talk to some of those that have made Hajj. It's almost impossible to come back the same. We drink water from Zamzam, going back to the real, uh, true, strong, moral nature that God has put in man and developed it. We run between hills of Safa and Mawa, as Hagar did, for his son Ishmael. And then we have the uh, Walasa. Man is confused, but faith in God, he will guide you. Walasa. Innal and San el by the time through the ages. Truly, social man in there, then say, Raju, uh, in there, so, truly social man is in loss, except such as have faith, see, that faith is not enough, and do righteous deeds, and join together in the mutual teaching of truth and of patience and constancy. So why sacrifice your son? 
Let him live and you live and they both lived as two prophets together, father and son. And they built a sign of the establishment of the world of mankind. That is what the Kaaba is. It is a sign of how the world of mankind, the house for all people. Here we go again. When you combine all the colors, black, brown, yellow, we know it's a meteorite. But when you combine all the colors, it is black. The absence of color is, is white. All right, like this here. All right. So we have the black stone. All right. So we have uh, uh, all the people, black, brown, yellow, red, any color. Again, American, Sudanese, Pakistani, uh, Indonesian, Canadian, any country. The black stone is the cornerstone. It is to be, it's to be established under God, respecting the good nature. There we see each other not as colors or hearts. We don't see each other as colors, not as nationals. But we see each other as Muslims under God, building towards a society of righteousness, but rationally informed, scientifically based, so we can be a model for all the worlds. As we conclude, this is indeed the most significant day in the life of a Muslim, because Eid al-Adha is a sign. It represents the way man makes a personal sacrifice for the benefit of society by giving the best of himself, the best of herself in the service of Allah. Alhamdulillah, kima salat. Once again, it is part of Salat. This is a ritual. Our ranks should be straight. But we don't want any space between each other. No jealousy. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I see one. Yes, so when you all make prostration, it won't be. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. All right, we ready in the rear? All right. And remember, we act as if this may be our last. And for somebody, it is their last. Boy, I almost broke down crap. For somebody, it is. May not be in this audience, but somebody, it is. So let's keep that in mind. Allahu Akbar. A'udhu Billahi Minish Shaitani Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Alam Nisra Leke Sadrak Wa Wadodne Anke Wizrak Eladi Anke Do Dhukra Wa Rafatne Leke Dhikra Fa Innima Al Ishri Yusra Innima Al Ishri Yusra Fa Ida Faragte Fansab Wa Ila Rabike Forgab Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وأملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Let us remember uh, Sunday August the 11th we expect to observe Eid al-Adha right here at the Masjid Allah Akbar Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. 